Hello, everybody, and welcome back into Gamecock Central. My name is Kendall Smith, joined alongside of Colin Taylor here for a baseball mailbag. And Colin, I cannot tell you how excited I am about this video. I love baseball season. It is my favorite time of the year. I mean, I love football season. Don't get me wrong. It's great. But I grew up a baseball gal. My brother played college baseball. So when college baseball season starts to get closer, I get more and more excited. I get more and more anxious for the season. And we're just under a month away now from South Carolina starting their season in mid-February. So we took to the Insiders Forum. We took to Twitter to get your questions, and we are going to answer them today. But first and foremost, Colin, are you ready for baseball season? Because I know it's going to be a busy time between the crossover of baseball and basketball for you. Uh, it is January 18th. Uh, as of January 18th, I am not ready for baseball season, just kind of given how um, everything's gone. But once I get out to some preseason scrimmages, we start doing the media availabilities, I'll be ready to go and, and come opening day. It's, it's like a kid in a candy shop. I'm, I love opening day. Um, I love traveling and seeing all these venues and it's a lot of fun to uh, get out there and, and hang out with these guys. It should be a fun year. I like this team and excited to see where it goes. I think South Carolina baseball is so interesting because the expectations are so high for this team and it doesn't matter what year it is, who is on the team, the fans expect the team to be competitive. It is one of the programs at South Carolina that is held to a higher standard. And that's because South Carolina has had such success winning back-to-back -back College World Series back in the early 2010s. So this year, absolutely no different. South Carolina starting off number 23 in the country in the preseason polls. But Colin, I want to talk about expectations for the year to start things off. And that was one of the questions we got a couple of times. Last year, South Carolina very much underachieved you could say and I think a lot of fans were very disappointed in how that season went last year so for this year what do you think fair expectations are for this 2023 team yeah and I, I will say about 2022 which <laughs> the entire program the coaching staff all the players are so ready to move on from talking about 2022 uh, a lot of injuries on the pitching side really affected things the offense never really got going um the top half of the lineup was great. Then you're having to rely on a bunch of freshmen under that, and, and it just didn't go well. And, and you saw how the season ended. Uh, I think the first losing record um, in this century. So not great for South Carolina, but um, they retooled. This is a, I mean, a pitching staff that when you talk about it is probably one of the top three or four in the league on paper entering the season. Uh, and then so by proxy, one of the best in the country. Uh, the questions obviously rely on the offense, but you bring in some pieces, you have some pieces to work with. So from an expectation standpoint, all that to say the postseason is the bare minimum of what fans should expect. This is a program that um, it's it's darn near requirement <laughs> to make the postseason if you're South Carolina um, and expectations to be to look better. Uh, you need to look better and be more competitive against what is right now the upper echelon of the SEC, the Tennessees, the Mississippi States, the um, Florida's Vanderbilt's of the world, the Arkansas's where you go. So you need to look competitive. You need to look better offensively, more well-rounded. Um, the pitching staff should on paper take a bounce back year after what was a rough injury riddle 2022. Um, the expectation should be, yeah, postseason at, at bare minimum. And then um, I think the hope is uh, for South Carolina uh, to be in contention for one of those top 16 seeds, a host seed um, in the NCAA tournament. And this team has the potential to do that. We'll see if it um, actualizes and, and we get to a point where South Carolina is considered one of the best um, 10 to 15 to 20 programs in the country. And, you know, moving on from last year in 2022, we can say that all we want, but fans are still going to sit there and they're going to say that was extremely disappointing and some of them very disappointed with the way that Mark Kingston has run this program over the last few years and the way that things have turned out for South Carolina. So in order for him to return in 2024, a question was, is it fair to say that the bare minimum should be a super regional appearance for the Gamecocks? Yeah, it's tough. And I understand the frustration from the fan base and, and potentially wanting a change. And 
I'll, I'll say that first and foremost, because this is, like I said, a program that you expect to not only make the postseason every year, uh, but you expect to contend for top eight seeds, top 16 seeds, go to Supers, go to Omaha. And, uh, for, for Kingston to have, I think it's five years now with the postseason, uh, 18, 19, 20, or four years with the postseason, 2020 was obviously canceled. And to miss it twice with two really incredibly subpar years um, mixed in with a super regional appearance and then a regional bounce at home, um, I think the frustration's there. In terms of what it's going to take for him to be back in, in 2024, I don't it, – it's hard to say from an expectation of – because when you get into the postseason, there's a, you know, such a crapshoot at times. Teams get hot. Um, the expectation should be to contend for a regional host spot, um, to be a top half of the SEC team, to be in contention heading into the final weekend for maybe a top four seed in the SEC tournament or – um, to be comfortably in the NCAA tournament heading to Hoover. So, yeah, the the, the bare minimum should be probably contending for a top 16, and um, we'll see what happens after that. But South Carolina just has to look better. Um, at the, I mean, bare minimum has to look better. And if they do that, they'll be in contention for a top 16 seed. They'll be in contention to be one of the better teams in the SEC, um, from especially from a pitching side of things. So, We'll see, but yeah, you have to maximize potential of this team. And if you do, um, it has a chance to be a pretty solid season for South Carolina. And, and if you do that, you have a team that can make a run to a super regional, can make a run potentially to Omaha. But um, like I said, it's January 18th. It's far too early to start thinking about potential runs through the NCAA tournament. But I think a good, really good regular season and then a strong showing in the postseason. Um, would be would do wonders for Mark Kingston in this program. And something that plagued South Carolina last year was their offensive production, certainly struggling at the plate at times. Very inconsistent because they did have their high moments last year where they were beating top teams in the country and you saw flashes of really, really great play from them. And then they had other moments where they would lose to the Citadel on the road in a midweek game on a Tuesday. So just very inconsistent and a lot of that can be tagged to the fact that, yes, South Carolina had some injuries on the pitching staff, but they also really struggled at the plate. So this year they bring in Monty Lee, who used to be the head coach at Clemson. And a question that we got from one of our viewers is with Monty Lee working with the hitters, are we expecting more contact hitting for singles and doubles and less about launch angle and hitting home runs? So he said, in other words, is the philosophy and approach more about improving batting average and less on power hitting? I'll start with the launch angle stuff and hitting home runs. Um, that philosophy has gone out the door really since Kingston's first or second season. He's just, he, he's kind of scrapped that after that rough 2019. Um, they've really not focused on that. It's, it's been about line drives. It's been about hitting for power, but not specifically home runs. And the teams that Kingston put together in 19, 20 and, and 21 offensively, uh, we're more about that power hitting. We're more about, you know, you, when you talk about Brady Allen and Wes Clark and Josiah Seitler and some of the guys that they had, it was more about hitting home runs. With Monty, you, you saw a little bit last year with Chad Kaye, um, but the cupboard was, I mean, for lack of a better word, kind of bare from a depth standpoint. Um, there was a lot of youth. So you saw trends towards that, but it just never really actualized because you were relying on so many young guys. The cupboard for Monty now, because some of those freshmen are now sophomores and you brought in some talent from the transfer portal and you're getting Wimmer back, um, that, that's better. And I think you'll see more of a well-rounded offense this year. Uh, it's Founders Park. You're going to hit home runs. It's going to be, I mean, this, this ballpark was kind of built for left-handed hitters to go pull side and, and crank them out to Williams Street. But you'll see more of a holistic approach. You'll see more you know, Evan Stone, Dylan Brewer, um, Michael Braswell, who we'll talk about uh, on base guys you have and, and Wimmer to a degree too, but he's kind of a, he can get on base and be a power guy too. Um, but you have your Gavin Costas, you have your Caleb Denny's, you have your uh, Carson Hornings and um, I'm forgetting some others, your Jacob Compton's, but I didn't set him, who are your power guys too, um, who are going to hit home runs, who are going to have your RBI opportunities. So 
um, it'll be more holistic and they're going to run more because they have a Braylon Wimmer, because they have an Evan Stone, because they have a Will Tippett, who's your utility guy. You're going to see more of a dynamic athletic offense, which you saw signs of last year. Um, but it's not going to be this power happy, pull side everything, trying to just crank it 600 feet. Um, it's all about gap to gap. It's about going, understanding the strike zone, not striking out as much. Uh, quality at bats, even if you get out. And Monty Lee's a big on base percentage guy. Um, so I think you're going to see a really big emphasis on the, you know, OPS is now the big thing in baseball uh, from the minor leagues up to the majors. I think you're going to see a team with a better OPS than what it was last year on base plus slugging, um, where you get on base and then you have these dudes who can come behind you and hit those doubles, hit those home runs to really drive in runs and be a more dynamic offense and put pressure on a defense more so than maybe you saw in years past with a, a more of a home run happy boomer bust offense in, in 21 and to a degree 2022. It's interesting that you bring up Michael Braswell there because that's a great segue into a question that we got quite a bit. You were thinking ahead. Thank you for that, Colin. You're making my job easy here. Uh, but yes, Michael Braswell, we got a lot of questions about him on the Insiders Forum. So the question that I will go with is, it seems like I haven't heard much about Braswell this off season. Is it looking like he is going to be back backing up Kevin Madden if uh, Madden is healthy and is he going to pitch? I'll start with the pitching aspect. Probably not. Um, with the way this staff is structured with, you know, let's start rattling off names. Will Sanders, Noah Hall, Jack Mahoney, um, Jackson Phipps coming back, Matthew Becker, Eli Jones, Eli Jerzenbeck, um, and, and a host of other guys that I'm probably missing. Um, James Hicks, um, just an insert a name. The need isn't necessarily there for him to pitch. And now he can focus all of his attention really on offense. And um, he had a solid freshman season, but struggled at times, especially against SEC pitching. So having him focus solely on um, hitting, I think is good for him and his development and getting stronger. So I think that's the, the big emphasis for him and where he plays is kind of a, a to be determined at this point. Um, he started at shortstop last year because Braylon Wimmer played shortstop in the, the fall heading into the season and struggled before 2022 and then comes back, turns down money from the draft and plays a fantastic shortstop this past fall. Um, it's probably the penciled in starter right there heading into opening day. Um, if Wimmer does not start at shortstop, then certainly Braswell is probably the backup there along with Will Tippett. Braswell's going to be in that competition right now for that third base spot. Kevin Madden's coming off injury. Um, he was really good before injury and he's kind of scuffled when he got his elbow hurt. So what Kevin Madden looks like will determine that. Um, and Braz, it'll be Braswell and Madden for that top spot at third base heading into opening day. And we'll see how it shakes out, but he can be a versatile piece um, if he's in the lineup top of the order guy um, or that eight, nine guy who can serve as kind of a, a double leadoff man, if you want, um, but was good at getting on base last, or I guess in the fall, good at taking walks and just needs to continue developing, but he'll be probably the backup at short, potentially if Wimmer does anchor that position um, and then compete for that starting third base job as, as we start this preseason scrimmage uh, slate. Okay, Colin, I want to get into a couple more questions very quickly. We had a lot of great questions, so thank you so much to everybody who reached out. We apologize if we don't get to your question, but I promise we will have a ton more baseball content on GamecockCentral.com. So we will answer all of the questions as the season approaches. Yeah, apologies for not submitting usernames on these. I just went to the Insiders Forum, copied and pasted all the, the questions into Google Docs. So if we answered your question and did not say your username, Blame Kendall. <laughs> Just put the blame on me. I'll take yeah, it. No, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's you're, no you're big right. deal at this point. Yeah, you're right, Colin. Sorry for not yeah. saying the names. Uh, I don't have them in front of me. <laughs> you, know, you know who you are. So thank you to all of you. Uh, a couple more quick ones, Colin, because I want to get in as many as possible. First one, who do you think the leadoff batter for South Carolina will be this year? Or are there a couple names that you think it could go between? Yeah, right now, as we sit here on January 18th, they haven't played a preseason scrimmage yet. I'd lean Braylon Wimmer, but that's not set in stone. Uh, Will McGillis could do it if really needed. Heck, you could put Carson Horning there if he's healthy. He's a tremendous on-base guy. Um, but right now, Wimmer, just because he's a solidified day one starter, 
Um, depending on who wins the center field spot on opening day, whether it's Dylan Brewer, whether it's Evan Stone, um, they could be the leadoff guy. Evan Stone coming off a really strong fall. Dylan Brewer is a big on-base guy. Um, I'm trying to think of some others. Will Tippett, if he's in the lineup, could be a heck of, an, of a leadoff guy. Uh, freshman that this staff loves his potential. Um, switch hitter, so that gives you some flexibility there at the top of the order. Uh, but right now, from a veteran piece, from an experience piece, from a skill set perspective, uh, my guess is Braylon Wimmer. But there are a few options that they can tinker with as you get into uh, preseason scrimmages and what that might look like. Colin, a fun one for you. You travel to all of the games. You yes. love to go find the best barbecue places all throughout the oh. SEC. What college are you most looking forward to traveling to this spring? Ooh, let me think. I'm pulling up the schedule now because I should have been prepared. He doesn't even know where he's going. going <laughs> yeah, no. I, hey, at this point of the year, we're living day by day. Um, <laughs> let's see. I mean... They go to Clemson. I don't know how excited I am from a – that's a day trip, too. So it's not like we're – Right, like we're talking weekend trip, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Georgia's always a fun trip just because Athens is a fun trip. Um, you know what? I'll go and say Mississippi State. That is a really – Starkville gets a lot of you-know-what because it's Stark Vegas and it's rural Mississippi. I've been before. That city – to spend a weekend in is actually pretty fun. And um, that place is such a cathedral for college baseball, man. It's so much fun to go watch a game at Duty Noble. Um, I loved it when we went in 2019. The fans were so awesome. Um, they were offering, I mean, cause they have all these tailgates that sit out there um, in the outfield. And so we were walking through their pregame and I've told the story to anybody that'll listen. And, and one of the fans pulled me aside and said, hey, I see your media badge. I haven't seen you around here before you South Carolina. I said, yeah. He goes, come back out here fourth or fifth inning and we'll, you know, we got burgers, we got dogs, whatever you want to store. So we, there's me and then another writer go out there. Aww. We sit out there for probably two or three innings, update things from the phone. Sorry, Shu, if you're listening. Um, I, was, I was working on the job <laughs> in the outfield in 2019. Um, but as much free food as we could get, it was fantastic. That atmosphere, um, as much free alcohol as we wanted, I, I did not partake considering I was working. Um, but that, that atmosphere is so fantastic when that team is really good. Um, and I'm really excited to get back down there because Starkville is one of the best atmospheres that I've gotten to be around, um, in my time and my travels. And, um, that's an awesome one. And, uh, Vanderbilt's not, I got hit by a baseball during BP of Vanderbilt, so that's not a, a fun one for me. Um, uh, Arkansas is a fine trip, um, but Mississippi State takes the cake. So when you said they had burgers and hot dogs, you started saying, like, burgers, and I thought you were going to say bourbon, and I was like, all right, we're going to have to cut the cake. No. <laughs> we're going to have to cut the cameras on this one. Uh, I don't think that Shu needs to hear that. I don't think that the fans need to hear that, but that sounds like a great time. I'm actually going to Ole Miss for my first baseball series this That's year. That's one of the few SEC venues I have not been to yet. I'm very excited, obviously, coming off of their College World Series win. My brother is in law school at Old Miss, so I'm very excited. Uh, I don't travel to baseball games like I do football games. I'm working hockey. I work for uh, the Charlotte Knights, which is AAA affiliate for the White Sox. But if I were traveling, Vanderbilt would be the one I would be most looking forward to. Colin, you well, know we, I love Nashville. We do, know how much, yeah, we do know how much you love Nashville and um you love hockey, so you love Zambonis, and it's there's just a lot that goes into um, we know how much Nashville means to you, and and that's a interesting place to watch a game because there's such it's such a bandbox of a stadium. It is. It's a great city. Vanderbilt, obviously, a very storied program. So yeah, very exciting. SEC baseball. You really can't go wrong anywhere you go. It is the creme de la creme, the top tier of college baseball. And we get to cover it, which makes it so fun. Really quickly, though, before we get out of here, Colin, when is the first preseason scrimmage? Uh, so fans can kind of know the schedule as we head into opening day. I believe it's next Friday. So we're recording this on January 18th. So 
um, I guess Friday would be the 20th. So that would be the 27th, if I'm doing my math correctly. Um, there's hopefully a baseball media day at some point soon. Um, we'll keep you updated on that, obviously, on social media and on the Insiders Forum with all of that baseball content as we get ready for um, the diamond and, and what should be a, a very interesting, at bare minimum, a very interesting 2023. Oh, I'm so excited. I can't wait for baseball season. We're going to have so much more content on baseball because it's Kellen and I's favorite sport. So we are ready. Well, I don't know. Maybe basketball is your favorite, but I love baseball. So we are going to have a great time covering baseball, talking about it all season long on GamecockCentral.com and on our social medias at Gamecock Central. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. Thank you for sending in your questions. I promise we will do more of these as the season gets closer and as the season begins and through it. So thank you so much. Have a great day, everybody. He's Kellen Taylor. I'm Kendall Smith. And this has been another Gamecock Baseball mailbag on Gamecock Central. <laughs>